Hello and welcome to the Pittsburgh Views YouTube channel. After a year of waiting since its release at the Detroit Auto Show, I'm finally going to get to drive the 2019 Ford Ranger. This is the 2019 Ford Ranger Super Crew finished in magnetic gray with medium stone leather interior. This is the Lariat trim which is the highest trim level you could get in the Ranger. It features a 2.3 liter 4 cylinder turbocharged engine and a 10 speed automatic transmission, which is the only driveline optional available currently in the Ranger. The 2019 Ranger is available in three trim levels, the XL, the XLT, and the Lariat. All three are available in two and four wheel drive and super cab and crew cab configurations. The Ranger starts at $23,000 and goes up to just over $46,000. As you can see, the Ford Ranger also receives the Ford trademark trapezoid style grill. This Ranger is equipped with the 501A package and stickers at $41,275. Now let's check out the interior. If you've been in any Ford products lately, you'll notice a lot of similarities between the steering wheel, the dash layout, and the radio. For some reason, they decided to put the mirror switch on the dash instead of on the door panel. The 501A package includes SYNC 3 with navigation, a B&O stereo system with 10 speakers, and a remote start. The Lariat is the only trim level that features leather seating. You see we have two cup holders, a nice large armrest, a console style shifter, a hand e-brake, here's the 4x4 control knob, trailer tow button, auto start stop, it has dual climate control with heated seats, up here we have a sunglass holder and two map lights. Now let's check out the back seat. There's a cup holder in each door panel, map pockets behind the seats, a fold down armrest with two more cup holders. The rear seat's kind of cramped for large adults, but it would be perfect for children. It has the anchors for the car seats as well, and a manual sliding rear window. Now it's the moment I've been waiting for, the road test. When you first climb into the Ranger, you'll notice its car-like feel, or maybe even a crossover, but it definitely doesn't feel like a pickup truck inside. The steering wheel is a decent diameter and fairly thick and it's wrapped in leather It feels nice on your hands. The seats are soft and comfortable but don't, uh, don't offer much lateral support. Still, you definitely notice some turbo lag and the 10 speed transmission sh shifts quite a bit. The heated seats get hot really quick. The cabinet is pretty quiet with no noticeable wind noises or rattles. I expected the Ranger to have paddle shifters on the steering wheel like most other cars but it has a button on the shifter to shift up and down when in sport mode.
passing a Nissan dealer now. After the road test, I'm going to loop around and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Ranger against its main competitors. We're going to make this turn. I'm going to get on it a little bit and drive to see how it feels. It's fairly quick even though there is some turbo lag. The shifts are decent but pretty soft. Now I'm going to do the same thing in sport mode and see what happens. The truck definitely has plenty of power. Now we're going to merge on the highway. It accelerates the highway speeds with ease and feels stable and fairly quiet with minimal road noise. Now we're going to head back to the Ford dealership. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I try to put all my car reviews up on the hoist so we can see the undercarriage. The Ranger is also available in a Raptor version, but unfortunately it's not going to be available in the US. I'm going to pull her inside and get her up on the hoist. Here's a look at the turbocharged 2.3 liter dual overhead cam four cylinder engine. It puts out 280 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque. You can see the air filter and battery are easily accessible for maintenance. I can't say the same for the oil filter, but we'll get to that in a minute. It holds 6.2 quarts of 5W30 semi-synthetic motor oil. And it takes a Motorcraft FL910 oil filter. This is very similar to the engine found in the Mustang and also the Focus RS. Here's a look at the Ranger up on the lift. You can see this one did not come equipped with the trailer tow package. The Lariat features 265-6018 Hankook Dynapro ATM all-terrain tires, which are the same tires that could be found on F-150, and we've had fairly good luck with them. Step bars are also optional equipment on the Ranger. Here you can see the upper control arm and coils. And here's a better look at the 18-inch alloy wheel. In the front bumper, you can see the fog lights, the front crash sensors, and the tow hooks. Here's a look at the undercarriage. There's a stamped steel lower control arm. A coil over shock. You can see it already has a centric bolt installed for adjusting the camera and caster. It's got a nice big skid plate under here. So look at the sway bar. The dual piston calipers up front. You can see it has a composite transmission pan, two-piece rear drive shaft, 
nice big skid plate over the fuel tank. Back to the rear differential. See the leaf spring suspension. And it's equipped with the traditional style cable e-brake instead of the new electronic style. Like I said, this one doesn't have the trailer tow package, but it can still tow up to 2,300 pounds. It comes with a full-size spare on a steel wheel. And all Rangers have 373 gears in the rear end. Electronic locker is optional unless you get the FX4 package. Here's a look at the transfer case and the exhaust, which is a pretty decent sized diameter. There's a fairly large catalytic converter up here. And the oil pan is aluminum instead of composite and features a traditional drain plug. It's hard to see, but the oil filter is about halfway up on the left side of the engine, and I believe you're going to have to take the wheel off if you want to change the oil yourself. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Ranger and the Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. The Nissan has not been redesigned for a number of years and is really starting to show its age. This one's stickered a little over $38,000. I owned a Nismo Frontier in 2006 and it felt like it had the most power of all the small trucks available. It features a 4 liter V6 engine and a 6 speed automatic transmission. Here's a look at the rear of the trucks. I like how the Nissan has the utility tracks in the bed, whereas the Ranger doesn't seem to have anything like that. Here's a comparison between the Ranger and a Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. This was actually my personal truck up until about a week ago. The Nissan and Tacoma still offer 6-speed manual transmissions, whereas the Ranger is only available in an automatic. This truck features a 3.5 liter V6 engine and a 6-speed manual transmission. It's stickered just under $36,000. The Tacoma features a composite bed and also features utility tracks like the Nissan but it seems more shallow than the Ranger. Here's a comparison between the Ranger and a Chevy Colorado. This one featured the Z71 package and had a 3.6 liter V6 and a seven speed automatic transmission. It's stickered at $38,455. And last but not least, there's a comparison between the Ranger and a Honda Ridgeline. This is the RTL all-wheel drive model. It features a 3.5 liter V6 and a 6-speed automatic transmission. It's stickered at just over $37,000. The Ridgeline is definitely the most car-like and features a unibody design instead of body on frame and is front-wheel drive bias. So that's it for this look at the 2019 Ranger. In my personal opinion, the exterior styling is somewhat muted. I wish it was more aggressive looking. I'm sure the Raptor is, but we may never see that here. The fit and finish of the interior are very nice, and it gives it a luxury feel. Although it has some turbo lag, the engine has plenty of power. The 10-speed transmission shifts smoothly, but it shifts quite a bit. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for checking out my channel, and please subscribe if you haven't already.